Over the years, there have been a plethora of attempts to bring video games to the big screen, and though the odd one or two have been half decent, for the most part, they've been utterly terrible. Oftentimes, video game movies will go down badly because they fail when trying to capture the essence of our much-loved characters, though some seem like they haven't tried at all. For this list, we're taking a look at several instances of Hollywood getting it wrong when it comes to the characterization of some of our favourite gaming icons. Whether it's bad acting, writing, or just a complete misunderstanding of who those characters are as people, any example of a film that's missed the mark when it comes to bringing beloved personalities to life is welcome here. They're not all awful movies, but several of them are worse than most. We will do our best to avoid discussing pivotal plot points, but we can't guarantee anything, so a spoiler warning is in effect. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video game characters that movies got completely wrong. Number 10. Pyramid Head – Silent Hill as movie adaptations of video games go, 2006's Silent Hill isn't horrible. It isn't a great film by any stretch of the imagination, but it has its fans. Plus, it's got Sean Bean in it, so that's always a win. Silent Hill loosely follows the plot of the first game, but replaces Harry Mason with Rose and Cheryl with Sharon. The movie tells the story of the pair as they travel to Silent Hill, which Sharon calls out for in her sleep. Upon their arrival, the pair is involved in a car accident, and Sharon goes missing. While searching for her, Rose comes across a cult and begins to uncover the girl's connection to the town. Throughout the movie, there are several nods to the games. Sadly, the inclusion of Pyramid Head wasn't particularly well received by fans. When he is, in fact, Act, a physical manifestation of Silent Hill 2 protagonist James Sutherland's guilt. Clearly, the filmmakers thought that the mere appearance of the iconic character would bring joy to fans, but most were annoyed the pyramid head had been reduced to a mindless antagonist that was seemingly just bad for the sake of being bad. Number 9. Mewtwo – Detective Pikachu now, don't get us wrong, we appreciate that changes will always be made when any video game, or any source material for that matter, makes the leap to the silver screen. But we can't help but feel like what Detective Pikachu did to Mewtwo was just a scooch too far. Mewtwo first appeared in Pokemon Red and Blue, where players learned that it had been created following years of horrific genetic experimentation. Eventually, it grew so powerful that it broke free, destroying the laboratory that held it in the process. Not only did its modified genome mean its abilities were superior to Mew's, but it led to Mewtwo developing a vicious personality, and saw it primarily concerned with proving its own strength. However, when it came to Detective Pikachu, Mewtwo had been changed considerably. Its backstory is very similar, having been created in a lab by a deranged scientist, but although the audience spends much of the film's runtime believing that Mewtwo is the antagonist, it actually transpires that it's been one of the good guys all along. To us, it felt like like a strange choice on the part of the filmmakers. The Pokemon universe is filled to the brim with friendly creatures, and there's no need to turn one of its biggest villains good. Number 8. Agent 47 Hitman Agent 47 Although he may be a man of few words, Agent 47 isn't exactly a character you would call boring. The contract killer first appeared in 2000's Hitman Codename 47 and quickly established himself as an icon of video gaming. Despite being emotionally closed off, the Agent 47 we see in the Hitman video game series is an incredibly compelling and nuanced character. His highest priority is always the completion of his contract, and he strives to eliminate his target no matter what, but he still has a certain level of compassion, sacrificing innocence only if he must. The Agent 47 we see in Hitman Agent 47, on the other hand, is a one-dimensional suit full of bland that lacks anything even approaching a personality. The film stars Rupert Friend as the eponymous assassin, who is trying to track down the daughter of the geneticist that created him. In the filmmaker's defence, it's not an easy task to convey such subtle personality traits, and it's even more difficult to deliver a character that's stoic rather than one that's completely dull. Sadly, the more understated aspects of 47 got lost in the adaptation, and moviegoers has ended up with an emotionless husk of a protagonist. Number 7. Rain. Blood Rain. Oh, come on. You knew one of Uwe Boll's cinematic atrocities was going to end up on this list at some point. After all, it's impossible to talk about besmirching the good name of video games without name-dropping the director at least once. In our opinion, the Blood Rain games don't get the love they deserve. Sure, they're not the absolute best games in the world, but if you're looking for a bit of vampire-y hack-and-slash fun with a sassy female protagonist, 
you can do much worse. Blood Rain, the movie on the other hand, was a travesty. And although veteran actors Michael Madsen and Ben Kingsley did what they could with the material, with Bowl at the helm, the whole thing was doomed to fail. On this occasion though, we can't put all the blame on Uwe Boll. Shocking, I know. His direction no doubt contributed to why the titular character came across like a lifeless robot, but Christina Loken's wooden portrayal was the main problem. It probably doesn't help that Rain's voice actor was the iconic Laura Bailey, so the bar for the performance was already quite high, and it seems like Loken, whose most famous role prior was TX in Terminator 3, just couldn't measure up. Number 6. Bison Street Fighter Legend of Chun-Li Although 1994 Street Fighter took an absolute kicking from critics, it's almost impossible not to love Raul Julia's performance as M. Bison. Sure, it's campy and hammy, but when you're portraying a megalomaniacal dictator with a love for big capes, how could you not be? Alas, we've got no such love for the Bison we see in Street Fighter Legend of Chun-Li, a film that clearly heard someone say nothing could possibly be worse than the first Street Fighter movie, before promptly shouting, HOLD MY BEER! Rather than attempting to recreate the M. Bison we've seen in the video games, Legend of Chun-Li filmmakers opted to completely rewrite the character. It was a bold move, to say the least. Where the game's Bison was an imposing gangster with serious fighting prowess, the Legend of Chun-Li Bison was a wimpy-looking crime boss played by Neil McDonough, an actor that one wouldn't immediately think of if asked to cast a tyrannical dictator. The icing on the cake was Bison's accent, as for some reason, the filmmakers decided to make Bison Irish but cast a non-Irish actor in the role. There is no room for error. McDonough tried his best, but the result was utterly ridiculous and turned one of the most iconic villains in gaming into a complete joke. Number 5. Nathan Drake – Uncharted now before anyone goes off in the comments, this is not a shot at Tom Holland or his acting chops. He did a perfectly reasonable job with what he was given by Uncharted's filmmakers. It's just that what he was given wasn't very good. The film sees Nathan Drake working as a bartender in New York when his friend, Victor Sully Sullivan, convinces him to join an expedition to find Nate's missing brother. Those familiar with the Uncharted games will know that Nathan Drake is a cheeky Indiana Jones sort who lives for adventure. Even when he attempts to retire from treasure hunting, it doesn't stick, and he needs very little in the way of an excuse to get back out there and search for some ancient doodad or other. Conversely, the Nathan Drake we meet in the movie shows no signs of being remotely interested in adventure and more or less has to be dragged on the expedition, kicking and screaming, only agreeing to go on the off chance he might get to see his brother. It's possible that filmmakers didn't want to create a character that was too much like Harrison Ford's iconic action hero, but if that was the case, they probably picked the wrong franchise to bring to the silver screen. Number 4. Max Payne – Max Payne we're sticking with our vaguely Mark Wahlberg-y theme for the time being as we shift our attention to Max Payne, the 2008 neo-noir thriller that's based on the video game series of the same name, and stars Wahlberg in the title role. Unlike many video game series, which tend to get worse with every successive sequel, the Max Payne titles have gone from strength to strength, and that's no doubt thanks, in part, to their protagonist. Inspired by the jaded detectives of old noir movies, Max is cynical, has a dark sense of humour, is hellbent on revenge, and yet still manages to endear himself to the audience. The Max we meet in the movie, on the other hand, has about as much personality as your average potato. The film is based on the first game in the series, and sees the New York cop venturing into the criminal underworld in order to uncover the truth behind the murder of his wife and daughter. Stylistically, the filmmakers hit the nail on the head, but although Max Payne looks the part, it's completely lacking in substance. The script missed out all of Payne's wit, which meant that Mark Wahlberg went entirely to waste. Better writing could have delivered the Max Payne we all deserve, but instead, we just got another bland action hero to add to the pile. Number 3. King Cooper – Super Mario Bros if I was to ask you to describe Bowser, aka King Cooper, of Super Mario Bros fame, what sort of thing might you say? I imagine you'd probably go with something along the lines of big yellow turtle thing with spiky horns and snazzy red hairdo, rather than blonde guy in a suit. Alas, the latter was what the Super Mario Bros movie subjected cinema goers to when it released in 1993. First things first, let's address the womp in the room. Super Mario Bros is not a good movie. 
And though it's enjoyable in an ironic sort of way, pretty much every beloved Nintendo character depicted within it is almost unrecognisable. With that said, none of the makeovers were quite as extreme as the one given to King Cooper. In the Super Mario Bros games, King Cooper is a dinosaur-like creature with a turtle shell that can generally be relied upon to kidnap Princess Peach at any moment. In the movie, however, Cooper is the ruler of Dino Hatton. Yes, really. Complete with legions of burly henchmen, his reptilian appearance is replaced with a humanoid one that sports heavily gelled hair and a ridiculous business suit. Cooper may be one of the most prolific villains ever, but he still deserved better than this. Number 2. Leon S. Kennedy – Resident Evil – Welcome to Raccoon City it's fair to say that the Resident Evil series hasn't had the best time of it when it comes to movie adaptations. Whilst Paul W.S. Anderson's series has its fans, the film's never achieved critical acclaim, and Johannes Roberts' 2021 effort Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City fared no better. In terms of its story, Welcome to Raccoon City was reasonably faithful to its source material. The movie is based on Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2, and follows a number of familiar faces as they attempt to survive the zombie outbreak in Raccoon City. There were several characters in this movie that upset fans of the series, but perhaps the biggest misstep was Leon S. Kennedy. In the games, we first meet Leon in Resident Evil 2, where he's introduced as a slightly naive but hugely likeable rookie cop with a cool head, buckets of compassion, and a strong sense of justice and duty. The Leon S. Kennedy in Welcome to Raccoon City fame, on the other hand, is clearly meant to be the comic relief. He's lazy, drinks heavily, hates his job, drops the F-bomb like it's the only word he knows, and generally really bumbles his way through the entire movie. We can forgive a lot, but we may never get over what they did to our boy. And number one, Sindel, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. According to Rotten Tomatoes, Mortal Kombat Annihilation is the fifth worst video game movie ever made, and if you've had the misfortune to sit through it, you'll understand why. It was panned by critics upon its release in 1997, who blasted everything from its flimsy story and shallow characters to its mindless fight scenes and atrocious special effects. Annihilation's biggest sin, though, is undoubtedly what it did to Sindel. In the game's original storyline, Sindel is the Queen of Edinia, and is forced to marry the Outworld Emperor Shao Kahn against her will. Prior to her marriage, she is kind, compassionate and selfless, though Kahn's brainwashing later hardens her. At no point, however, does she come across as a pantomime villain, which is exactly the vibe we get from the Sindel in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. We're not really sure if it's the writing, directing or acting that's at fault, though we suspect a combination of the three, but Mortal Kombat Annihilation turns Sindel into a complete joke. She spends the entire runtime laughing maniacally and spouting cheesy one-liners, and honestly, it's painful painful to watch. The Sindel of the video games is a complex, tragic and nuanced character, and Annihilation, well, annihilated her.